I'm Paul Bennett at Shoestring Shipyard here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. Well, I know that some of you out there watching this are going to be wondering to yourself, why am I bothering to grind the excess fiberglass off the shear when this a lot of this plywood at the shear line is overhanging and it's going to have to be trimmed down to the shear clamp anyway. Why would I do that? The whole reason is for safety because very shortly it's going to be time to turn the boat over. We'll be lifting it off the strong back rotating it right side up and during the process you're always grabbing hold of the shear, grabbing onto it, and that excess fiberglass cloth with the resin in it that was overhanging uh, in many places has a razor sharp edge and if you grab a hold of it real quick you could get a very severe cut uh, in, in a serious injury probably requiring stitches you could even cut tendons and muscle so I think it's worth the few minutes to go around the shear and around the transom with the grinder and knock off all that excess overhanging fiberglass. And once that's done, I'll go back again with a palm sander with a little bit finer grit and smooth it out a little bit more so you don't have any sharp edges when you go to reach down and grab a hold of it. That's the reason. <laughs> now I know from past experience there's going to be somebody that won't have watched the video at all or haven't even they haven't even watched it this far and they have no clue and they're going to they're going to go down in the comment section they're going to start going off telling me you know how stupid I am because it's going to have to be trimmed anyway and <laughs> jokes on them and if they do that I'm just going to leave the comment up just so everybody can see how brilliant they are <laughs> Well, it took quite a bit of time, but I didn't want to bore you by putting it all on uh, in a video. I, I spent quite a bit of time with 36 grit, uh, a disc sander, 6 inch disc sander on my random orbital sander, and I went over the whole hull knocking down all the high spots. And then I cleaned that up, brushed it off. And then I went around the entire hull on all the surfaces with an 80 grit, the same sander. And then I went and I, I brushed everything off and I wiped it all down with some uh, acetone. And now the hull is ready to get two barrier coats of a two-part epoxy resin. I'm using Raka epoxy, so I just have to mix it up and start applying it to the hull. I'm going to mix a total of three quarters of a liter. So I'm using half a liter of epoxy and one quarter liter of hardener. And I'll mix those two together in a separate uh, mixing cup. And uh, I'm using these, I'm using these paper cups. You saw me use this with the polyester resin. I'm also using them for the epoxy resin. These do not have any wax in them. With this epoxy, I'm using a blush-free hardener, so there won't be any, uh, any amine blush that I have to wash off. So a little bit less work. It's slower to set up and harden, but that's good because I'm working by myself, and I can use the extra time. mix and mix it for at least a couple of minutes and uh, 
then I can start using it. Like most resins, and epoxy is no difference here, when you have it in a container, in a small container, and uh, it's concentrated, it develops a lot of heat, and that accelerates the cure time. So in order to give yourself more working time before it starts to gel and set up on you, and reduce that amount of heat, it's always best to, uh, once you have it mixed, it's best to put it in a shallow pan, such as a paint tray. So now, instead of concentrated into this cup, it's spread out more in the tray, and uh, that gives me more working time. So you want to scrape the sides every now and then when you're mixing the epoxy to make sure that you're getting a good blend. That should give me some good working time there. I'm just using a, uh, a short nap cloth uh, roller to apply it. And this is just a barrier coat. I'm not putting any glass over it. I already have the glass on the hull, which I applied with uh, polyester resin. And the polyester resin was a wax-free laminating resin. In the very last coat of the, uh, of the polyester resin, I did add some wax to it in order for the resin to cure fully and get hard. And then I had wiped everything down and uh, went over it with the acetone. I also wiped it down with styrene as well, just to make sure. There are some residues that the acetone won't pick up and vice versa with the styrene, so I wiped it down with both. And I just want to have a nice barrier coat here. And I'm going to do the entire hull twice. And I'm not going to ask you to watch the whole thing. That would be pretty boring. It's just like watching me sand for a few hours. Shortly after applying the two barrier coats of epoxy resin, I uh, went ahead and applied primer to the sides of the hull and on the transom. Uh, just to protect the epoxy from the UV rays of the sun. And where I didn't cover, the bottom will get bottom paint. I still have to add the outer stern post on the transom, and that's why you see a, a strip not covered right down the middle. And of course I have to add the false stem. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?